Hi, I'm going to have a chat about pivots today, but first, Scruffy needs a coffee. Hi, welcome to the channel. If you haven't been here before, my name is Langers, and I am the Scruffy Trader. No shock there then, because I am no style icon, but I am a pretty good trader. And I try and show that constantly with live trades and little vlogs of what goes on in this office. And I often connect with people and somebody who's trying to connect with me right now. Pop it. <laughs> Got your coffee. Got the coffee, because we all know Scruffy likes the coffee. And that's the other part of the vlogs. I always do them in a live working office, whether it's this one here or at home. And the star of the show constantly wants to look in. My good wife, Winky. But she does make the coffee. And we have had a petition on. Let's see how far we've got, because I'm not even going to mention what it is. And we know what it is. Uh, chances? It's cool. Yes? Chances? No, I don't have one. <sighs> no gold bikini, guys. But I am trying. And for those of you who haven't been here before, that probably makes absolutely no sense. I am an aging child. I do love Star Wars, have a crush on Princess Leia, all of that sort of thing. And Winky's having none of it. We all have our little vices. Anyway, talking of vices, pivots. It's quite a underused indicator, if you want to call it an indicator. It's really a set of levels and they're derived from the trading session prior. So if you're on a daily pivot, it'll be looking at yesterday. If you're on a four hour pivot, the last four hours, weekly, monthly, kind of get the picture. But what is it? Why are they important? Well, they're very simple in their design. The makeup is the high, the low, and the close. They're all added together and divided by three. And then what that does is it gives you pivot points. And I'll go on the screens and I will show you them on a chart because it's easier to see it on a chart and it kind of is drawn a few lines on a whiteboard and if the conditions are correct I'll put a trade on and show you it in real life but this is the thing whenever I'm on the screens it is a live chart I do not scroll it back if the conditions are correct brilliant off we go we'll make a trade based on the information that I'm looking at and if the conditions are not correct, then we kick into another part of trading. And that is sitting on your hand. Because believe it or not, that is a position. And talking of hands, I'm going to do a little trick. Do, do, do. Now for those of you that are my age, they might actually know what that is. And the reason I brought it up, because there's a special salute to a new Scruffy member called Dusty Bin. And if any of you in the 80s used to watch a program called 321, if you could crack the quiz on that, you could probably crack the Enigma code. It was horrendous. Nobody could ever work it out. Um, but it was worthwhile watching on a Saturday night. And I've got fond memories of Saturday night TV being a little kid at my grand's house. So thank you for that kind memory. And I second salute to you but also a salute while i'm talking to the chap who actually asked about pivots and it's ian from the scruffy squad it was a great subject and I, I do thank you for the question so let's now jump on the charts and we'll see what a pivot can actually do okay guys so like i said we're looking at pivots 
And the best way to see it is on a live chart. So let's have a little look. Top of the list, cable. You can't go wrong with cable. I look at it pretty much every single day. So how does a pivot help? Well, I've got a chart here. It's telling you not a lot. Run it out to a four hour, just so you can see what's going on. See, there's a massive sell-off and it's continuing. Stalled a bit, pushing up. Okay. Drop a pivot on and what the pivot will do is define you some levels and give you a trading range around the price as it is now with some key target areas either side of the pivot. The R1, R2, R3 stands for resistance. S1, S2, S3 stands for support. And the basic rule of thumb of pivots is if it opens below the pivot, it's gonna try and get to the S1. And likewise, if it opens above, it will try and get to the R1. Now, it's not set in stone. It's just a rule of thumb. But what the R1 and the S1 are very good at doing is setting an initial trading arena. Now, if I drop a line on there, you can see that R1 has been respected on a number of occasions on the four hour. Now there is also a four hour pivot and I'll show you that as I move down the time frames. And what we're looking at now is an hourly chart and you can see the drive and the price is contained nicely between these two areas and it's rotating around this pivot point because the way pivot is made up is it's derived from the last trading period. So if you're on a daily pivot, it's looking at yesterday. And as I showed you on the whiteboard, it's a very simple formula. Just pull it up so you can see it. It's the high, the low, the close, divide by three. Very simple. You can do it where it's the high, low, open, or all four. High, low, close, open, divided by four. So the maths is, pretty simple you know and the way you would trade this I mean if you pop on the four hour you can see straight away there's, there's a shift and the shift is slightly up which is this you know it's that that leg but the dominant trend is down okay and the daily pivots seem to be a little bit more stronger, a little bit more accurate, shall we say. So how do we actually know that this is in a downward move? Well, there's the old fashioned way. You can just see it. You know, there's no denying that's going down. So there'll be no shock when I put on a moving average. There's a 20 and a 50 that they are down and in alignment, 50 above the 20. Pull it to the hourly, and it's the same. Now, these moving averages are quite dynamic, and they act as support and resistance. And you can see it comes up, it respects, it dances around, breaks, and then it respects the other one, breaks away in one thing and another. Okay, so they're, they're very useful, but the problem with them is they're a little bit on the lagging side. So if I was just to use a pivot, okay, I take a dominant direction, in this case down, and then what I'm looking for is either a rejection of these levels moving down with an overall pinpoint around here, okay? And the way I would use it is I would have a trading range. I'm wanting to work on here. And if it's up here and rejects, I'm going to try and get it to the pivot. If it gets to the pivot and rejects, I'm going to try and get it to here and carve off money on the way down. So 
like I said, if I have a situation where I can see a trade, I'm going to take it and just show you an action. Well, here we go. Right, this is a 15 minute. So you drive up, push down, up, rejection. And now it's having to think about it. So we will micromanage it by dropping it down onto a five and let's have a look. Well, again, you can clearly see the rejection. Little bit of indecision here. You know, that's because you've got tails on either side. But it's pushing. So what we're going to do is we're going to drop a couple of orders in. Just on the other side of the tail, out the way. Because I want to see it come to me. I don't actually want to be on the wrong side of this. So I'm only going to put a couple of orders in. I'm only putting three orders in because that's roughly the difference down to the pivot. And that's what I'm trying to achieve. The ideal situation is for the order to be under here running this way. But we're starting to see a little shift in sentiment and you can see that. It's moving up, pushing down, moving up, pushing down. And you've got a series of higher highs, which is here. However, that is being broken or that cycle is being broken because this is not a higher high. Right? And you can see it's kind of topped out, fell away. It's gone up for another flush. And you're thinking to yourself, well, this is going to keep on rocking. The high time frame is telling you different. The higher time frame is telling you it's going down. Okay. So that's what we are working on. We're looking on a downward move. And the reason why you put your order a little bit out of the noise. So this is the candle that I wanted to base my trade on. Move it further down so it has to trigger into me. And it didn't. Came down, moved away. All right. You want a proper slam into it. And the reason you want your slam into it is it might take your order out quick because you want to be in and you want to be out. And that's the beauty of day trading. You know, talking of beauties, are you going to put get one? Well done. You see, see that subtle hint there, guys? See, see how much of a ninja I was there? Yeah, you're a ninja, all right. Ninja? Yeah. Can I work with you, you know? You really can. Well, you can. She, she, she is my best friend. And now you wait. But because you've set up your trading parameters, shall we say, you know, you've set your stall out. If it closes above here, it negates your sale. All right. You take your orders off. Hold on a second, man. Something not quite important is happening. Oi. <laughs> Oi. Say that. One word from me and she does as she likes. Oh, yeah, I'm right. <laughs> Never mind. I've had a great week this week, actually. Well, sort of. I've had a great week on the charts, anyway. Winky's been happy and... I've had loads of takeaways. I'm doing really well. Yeah, so happy days. Right. So again, while I'm looking at this, sorry, I was rabbiting a little bit. I can't force the markets for you guys. And when I am doing this, I'm doing it as part of my job, my, my, my day job, if you like. And I can only trade a live chart. You know, it's very easy for me to scroll back and open up a chart from months and months or even years ago because I've seen that as well and say that's it that's uh, the trade I would have took no you, you need to see it in action so that's exactly what we're going to do hello 
Not straight, I'm all right, bunny lad. Not yeah. I've got a visitor. Yes, while I'm trying to do this live, Mighty Mouth has turned up. Do you want to say hello to the world, Kevin? <laughs> hello, everybody. And I just hope no, no, you, oh, have to, you have to look in the camera, this thing here. <clears throat> This is our driver who comes visit us all the time. Yes. And he abuses me on a regular basis because he doesn't like Star Wars. He is a sycophant. No, I don't like him. Get out. Right, <laughs> cheerio. <laughs> while, while you're in there, you... Yeah, well, kettle's boiling my kid. You haven't got time? No. All right, okay. I'm it's all right, bunny lad. Don't you panic. What's wrong with your eyesight? Eh? What's wrong with my eyesight? I ain't no bunny lad. <laughs> Cheerio. I am old. Totty ta, -ta toodaloo. Sorry, boys and girls. Um, like I say, this is a working office, and we do have visitors coming left, right, and centre. And that was Kevin. Uh, he collects old parcels, ready to send off to the customers. Okay. Because this is we. Uh, Winkies. This is Winky's business where I come and terrorize everybody on a daily basis. So I do apologize for the rude interruption, but we do enjoy ourselves. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to let this play out because there's not a lot more I can say about the pivot apart from it's given me a defined range. It's given me a target area and it's also given me a stop area because it's very simple. You know, I'm entering the trade down here to get down to there. Stops are on the other side of it, up here out of the noise. So I'm nicely protected. And you're, depending on whether you can get this to keep on running, you've got a good risk to reward as well. You know, but when you're setting out your stall, because I get pulled on risk reward all the time. You never know whether you're going to be right or wrong. And that's why I skip. So it's just knocking out money. Every time a physician closes out, it reduces my risk. And it's paid me. And if the last little part doesn't play out fully and gets stopped out, then it gets stopped out. But the other ones are paid for it. That's the theory. And I've done it a very long time and it works. And over a period of time, it's turned out to be very, very profitable. Okay. And that's something I show all the time. And if you're interested in the, the ways that I trade, just look in the description and, and you'll find various links to contact me and the little bits and pieces that I do for you guys. Okay. So we triggered. And we're off and running, and I'll be triggered in a moment because I've heard the kettle go. Kevin hasn't made me a coffee. He insulted me by not liking Star Wars, but I like a cup of tea. And Winky's buggered off. You know, we were talking about Star Wars. Oi. Yeah. Is, is there something you'd like to do for me about Star Wars? Yeah. Let you watch it. She's gonna let me watch it. It was a subtle hint it that is. didn't work. <laughs> right. I'm gonna let this play down. I'm gonna enjoy the coffee. And then I'll come back to you if we win or we lose. Okay.
we go guys simple simple trade setup safely conducted and let's have a look there you go you know so how long has this been less than an hour all right and there you go can't complain at that and that is that so why was it safe and how did it work well yes i pull my stops in pretty quick and that's because you never know when the gravy train is going to run out you really don't so you put your target down here and hopefully you'll trail it in and what you're doing is is you're pulling your stop just a couple of candles behind where the price is and if you're getting a momentum push which is what i look for mostly you're fine you know but if it's going to reverse and take you out you're still fine because you're protected and your scale points have paid you that's that's the main theory but the basis of the trade was looking at these pivot points creating a trading range between the r1 and the s1 if it was up here it would have been further down okay because then it could be s2 to s2 depending on how you're working it out but the tighter the range the safer the trade okay i wanted to see a rejection that was there and down it came now if i'd seen it here and i was doing this earlier i'd have seen that rejection that candle there is telling you it's going up that one's telling you it's going up so you still be a bit cautious this one you can see a shift in sentiment but it's still mainly up and then that candle there is telling you it's go time so you ping an order in underneath there to try and get down here yes it goes against you a little bit but then wallop down it goes and again your stops are up there so it's quite an easy safe way to trade just using these three lines okay it's all rotating around this and it's contained between there so if it goes up you're looking to get from there into here the midpoint if it breaks the midpoint it's looking to go down there simple as that but the key element is based on your overall preference my overall preference was down short so the two key areas I was looking at was this one and this one. And it was very simple. Just like what I said, you look for rejection there to come back to the mid. You look for a break of the mid to get down to there. Simple, simple stuff. Okay. And that's the key with trading. Keep it simple and trade what you see, not what you think. And that's, the, the best advice I can give you. So I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to wrap it up. Had a great day. I've been paid. Hopefully, shown you something. Had a cup of coffee. And Winky even bought me some chips. Fantastic. So remember, guys, do what you love and money will follow. See you all in the next one.